Geiger Investments presents the Retirement Focus Academy with Kevin Geiger. There are many pieces to the modern retirement puzzle. This show talks about those pieces of retirement and the tools used to help the retired and soon to be retired toward their lifetime goals. Welcome. The Academy is on the air. Welcome to the Retirement Focus Academy, powered by Geiger Investments and Kevin Geiger. I'm Mark L.A. Glad you're with us today. And of course, you know, if you want to know more about Kevin and the team, you can always go to the website, geigerinvestments.com, G-E-I-G-E-R, geigerinvestments.com. And of course, there is a great resource for anyone that's nearing retirement or already in retirement that may have some questions, and that is, of course, the Retirement Focus Academy website. There's never a cost for you. There's on-demand. There's in-person classes. There's all kinds of great information. Check it out, retirementfocusacademy.com. Uh, there's Medicare information on there. There's Social Security information, income, investments, health care, all those kind of things. Uh, there's all kinds of topics and, and workshops that are built into the Retirement Focus Academy uh, website. If you have any questions, you can always call the team, 843-375-8700. But it's just retirementfocusacademy.com. Uh, glad you're with us today. And Kevin is a pilot. I don't know if everybody realizes that Kevin is a, is a pilot. We're going to talk about that retirement is a lot like being a pilot. Uh, so, Kevin, I guess before we get into this, maybe explain the the pilot background of Kevin Geiger. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so I've been actually I've been a private pilot now for gosh, I think it's uh, twenty years now. So I've been flying for a pretty long time. It's always been a passion of mine to be able to be a pilot. Almost decided to join the Air Force uh, when I was younger. Didn't didn't end up doing that. Then I thought about becoming a commercial pilot. Didn't end up doing that, which. Uh, and unfortunately, I know enough people in the commercial pilot industry, and it's been kind of a mess in the last, you know, ten or twelve years. But you know, I I absolutely love flying. It's one of my biggest passions, and you know, what's neat about it is just there's just so much that goes into being a pilot. It's not just like jumping into a car. You know, there's more stuff that goes into it, and just the joy of being able to be in the air is one of the most amazing things that I could uh, I can ever say in this entire world. So I love it. And it's uh, it's definitely something I think anyone that has an interest for should think about doing. So did you grow up around Chicago, in Chicago? Yep, yep. I grew up so in Chicago. after school, Chicago. then you just go to O'Hare and watch planes come in and out? Is that what you did? Yeah, there actually, <laughs> there there is the, an airport that I Midway. fly into. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, actually, the airport I fly into is the old Powaukee Airport. Okay. So anyone that's uh, familiar with Chicago and heard of Powaukee Airport which now is called Chicago Executive. Uh, when I was a kid, there used to be a restaurant right on the field. And so you used to be able to listen to the radio calls right there at your table. And it was it was amazing. So I remember just watching the planes taking off and you see these you know private jets, smaller planes. And it was so neat. And it was like something I've always wanted to do. And, you know, my at work for United Airlines. Um, and so I was, you know, back in the day when you're able to go on the planes early and stuff like that. I was able to go in the cockpit and sit there and, and play with the controls. I mean, it was it was such a neat time, you know, when I was younger <laughs> versus oh, yeah. today. That's awesome. yeah. uh, but it was always something I've always wanted to do and, and definitely took this on, on on my private end to be able to, you know, enjoy my passion and things so like that. So how old were you when you started to, to get your own private pilot's license? And then what is the process like? Because I imagine you just don't know, go down and you do a couple touch and goes and you're, you got a license. It's probably a little more complicated than that. Yeah, no, there is. Uh, you know, so when I, I finished college, College is when I decided to finally start getting into it. You know, I, I'd just gotten into my career, uh, you know, starting to do well with it, but I decided I was just missing something and I, I wanted to become a private pilot. So sure enough, went around to a couple different airports in the area uh, and, you know, found a flight school, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and there's a lot that goes into that. And I don't think people understand that, you know, unlike, you know, getting your driver's license, you know, to becoming a pilot, there's so much that goes into this, right? So there's, you know, you got to read a book that's, you know, like a huge Bible sized book of everything you need to know about, you know, the FAA regulations, how to handle certain characteristics. And then you do flight training, you know, where you'll fly 50 to 60. And sometimes I know people have been doing almost 80 hours of flying before they're ready to do what's called a check ride, where you, you actually go up with someone that's an FAA approved uh, person to basically check out to make sure you're doing all these maneuvers and all these emergency things properly before they can sign off and give you, you know, your license. And I remember mine real well. You know, I, I had a uh, gentleman who was a triple seven pilot at the time for uh, United Airlines, and he put and a me through. A triple seven pilot means what? 
basically they got the Boeing seven 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 plane. Okay. So that's what he had flown. And he had thrown me through the ringer. I mean, I, I through every emergency thing I could possibly think of. And, you know, you just want to break down and cry because you're like, yeah, I'm going to fail this thing, right? And I just kept fighting it and figuring everything out. I could try to figure out. And then we land, and I'm I'm literally like, I'm done. I failed. I'm done. I'm not going to be able to do this. And, you know, he's, he's, he says, okay, shut the plane off after we park. He looks over to me. He goes, you know what? I'm passing you for one main reason. You know, he's because like, I threw a lot at you. And, you know, some things weren't done 100%, but then other things you were doing fine and stuff like that. But he says, you never gave up. That was the number one reason why he passed me. He says, you know, everyone's going to be in an emergency situation at some point in their life. Hopefully not, but it might happen, I guess. He says, but the fact that you just kept going with it and fought it all the way to the end is the reason why, you know, you got passed and stuff like that. I was like, wow, this is, you know, thank you. You My my ego got pushed over the top, right? And so I was so (laughs) excited about it. But, you know, it's just... I mean, there's so much stuff that goes into, you know, being a pilot, you know, and so when you're starting to learn how to fly, you'll end up doing a lot of takeoffs and landings um, and all that kind of stuff. You learn how to, you know, read checklists. You know, checklists is a huge part about being a pilot. You need to be able to go down a list every time you're flying before you, you know, even start the plane. You're doing what's called a pre-flight, walking around the plane, checking all these things, checking the field to make sure there's no water in it. There's so many things that go into it, right? And then when you get in the plane and you start flying, you got to go through the checklist, you know, before you start the engine, you know, when you're getting ready to take off, as you're climbing out, as you're descending to land. And if you got to follow these things, because if you don't, you might miss something that's critical. And let's face it, you're in the air and gravity is always going to win, right? So you want to make sure that plane is in tip top shape. You want to make sure you're doing all the configurations you need to do so you can get up in the air safely and get back down on the ground safely. So that's why checklists are so important. But anyone that's ever looking and you know looking to get their pilot's license or ever had a passion for it, I highly recommend it. It's the most amazing experience I think anyone can ever have. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you'd like uh, the team at Geiger Investments to fight for you and your retirement, do you have any questions or concerns? Hey, Kevin, when can I retire? Do I have enough? Will my money last as long as I do? Will my loved ones be okay if something happens to me? 843-375-8700 is the number. Uh, there's no cost. There's no obligation to chat with the team. They're here to help. Just don't know if they can until they to hear your situation. 843 375 8700. I'm Mark Elliott, Kevin Geiger, of course, uh, with Geiger Investments. Him and his wife, Lauren, started the company. They also have the Retirement Focus Academy website and the non-for-profit, uh, really, workshops, retirementfocusacademy.com. So would you say that your experience as a pilot and your experience as a financial advisor now for over 20 years, that it really kind of goes together in in helping your clients. I mean, the, the kind of the how you have to operate a plane is kind of how you have to go through that checklist with your clients. I would imagine as well. Absolutely, and that's that's the thing. So being a pilot is all about discipline, right? In and being in retirement, you know, it's all about being disciplined too. You just can't wing it. You know, I can't just get into a plane and just and never check anything, go up in the air and fly it. Because what happens if uh, I have no fuel in the plane? You know, what happens if I have no oil in the plane? You know, there's all these things that come into when you're using this checklist. And so every time I go fly, I'm always going through those checklists. Well, it's the same thing when we sit down with people. You know, as a financial advisor, I've brought my my pilot skills, if you want to call it, into my financial investment world where, you know, every time we sit down with a client, I'm going through a checklist whether it's in my mind or on the ones on paper that we go through to really check off each box to make sure that we're covering everything that's important that we know is going to be important for you and things that you might not even thought about and make sure we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's because it's real important to, you know, follow these, you know, little checklists when with any time we sit down with someone new. And even with our current clients, we're going down these checklists to make sure that we're covering, you know, where they are today, what's changed, you know, how we're going to address, you know, new e- environmental issues, you know, because obviously we got inflation that's been becoming a problem. We don't know where this stock market's going to go in the near future. There's so many variables that go into this stuff. So, you know, so what's neat about me is, like I said, as I, being a pilot, I, I bring that discipline, I bring that checklist, I bring that, you know, that process into the workspace because I feel that the two and two kind of work together. And I think it's kind of neat to bring that analogy of a pilot being just like, you know, someone in retirement and being someone in a financial industry world because it does have to work in an order. And if you do things backwards or you don't do it completely, you're only going to cause issues for yourself down the road. So it's real important, you know, that they all kind of work together. Yeah. So when you sit down with clients and you create an income plan, an investment strategy, a tax efficient strategy, a healthcare, long term 
care plan, legacy estate planning, Social Security is in the income part, Medicare is in the health care part. And if we miss any of those areas, uh, because they're really all tied together, just like when you're doing your pre-flight checklist on your plane, if they're, they're all tied together. It's not like you can just skip some of them. And I think a lot of people, when, they come, when it comes to retirement, they think only of the investment part. Income is really where retirement starts, but you know the health care, the legacy, all of those things are tied into it. Everything is always woven together, I would think. Yeah, it is. And that's really what it is, is, you know, when you look at our checklist right in the plane, we have our, our pre-flight, the stuff we do before we even get in the plane, you know, the, the checklist to start the engine, the checklist before you're setting everything up, you're setting your, where your navigation is, you're setting your radios up, you're checking all this kind of stuff. And then before you even take off, you're doing checklists and then you have a checklist to take off and then you have a checklist to climb out. I mean, there's so many things that go into it. Well, it's the same thing with re retirement, right? You're going into retirement. This is a whole new world for you. And it's, you know, and it's a scary world for a lot of people because this is something they don't fully understand. They think they do because if they've been doing their, their life like they have been, you know, they've had kids if they had kids, they've gotten them through school, maybe through college and, you know, they're moving forward and you kind of feel like you're a success, right? You've moved forward, you've saved money, you're now ready for retirement. Here's the problem though. There are so many more variables in, in retirement that you're not aware of, that you're not probably going to be prepared for. So sitting down with a professional who's going to go through these checklists to make sure that we're checking off all the areas. Do we have the healthcare situation figured out? Because, you know, Medicare is a big piece of the puzzle and you've got to make the right decisions with Medicare the day you become eligible. Because so many times, you know, with our other company, Carolina Medicare, we've seen there's too many mistakes left out, you know, out there that people aren't doing things. Or sometimes they just take Part A and Part B, which is the original Medicare, and don't add anything else to it. And now they're exposing themselves to a 20% you know, expense every time they get sick and things like that. And then they try to go into a new plan down the road. And the problem is now they have to go through underwriting because they missed that opportunity to get into it. You know, or like I said, you know, maybe you have a younger spouse. What are you doing to ensure that younger spouse is going to be financially sound if and when you were to pass away? You know, there's all these things, you know, and a lot of people are like, well, you know, I'll just have money saved up. But maybe you should set up different plans and structure things out properly so you're doing what's right to take care of that spouse. I mean, there's so many things that go into this thing, but that's where our checklists come into play. This is when we sit down and we look at everyone's situation because everyone's going to be unique and different. And that's what's so neat about this industry is even though we do a lot of things the same, you know, with checklists and things like that, everyone's situation is different. So I actually get joy out of building a custom plan that's going to be perfect fit for what their needs are going to be. But you won't know that until you sit down and go through that checklist to figure out where the weaknesses are, what needs to be addressed, and performing a plan that's going to be executed properly so you can go through your retirement successfully and you can make sure that your spouse and your family are taken care of in the end. That is the number one thing that everyone needs to be doing to be successful. 843-375-8700 if you would like to talk with Kevin and Lauren and the team at, at Geiger Investments uh, about where you are on your road to retirement. 843-375-8700. Again, there's no cost for this chat. There's no cost to even come in and sit down and talk with them either. 843-375-8700. If you just want to do a little due diligence on your own and try to find out about some di different areas of retirement that you're not really sure about, you can always go to the, the, the non-for-profit website, uh, Retirement Focus Academy. There's a bunch of workshops on there, all different topics related to retirement. That's retirementfocusacademy.com. More with Kevin Geiger on Retirement Focus Academy right after this. You know what you want to do in retirement, but do you know how to get there? Get the retirement planning information you need by joining Kevin Geiger of Geiger Investments for the Retirement Focus Academy. What's the best way for you to take Social Security? When can you sign up for Medicare and what does it actually cover? What and is there a way to lower your tax bill? These and much more will be discussed. To enroll in an upcoming virtual Retirement Focus Academy course, visit retirementfocusacademy.com or call 843-790-9293. Plan today so you can do the things you've dreamt about doing in retirement. Sign up for the Retirement Focus Academy with Kevin Geiger of Geiger Investments at retirementfocusacademy.com or call 843-790-9293. Advisory services offered through Black Ridge Asset Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Securities offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC, member FINRA SIPC. Black Ridge Asset Management, LLC, and Geiger Investments are separate and independent entities from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Our firm is not affiliated with the U.S. government.
You're listening to the Retirement Focus Academy with Kevin Geiger, powered by Geiger Investments, 843-375-8700. Kevin is a pilot, and he is a private pilot. He's got a 1977 Cessna 421C, uh, but he can fly to Chicago, fly down to Florida, fly over to Atlanta. Not going to go to Arizona in that plane, not quite fast enough, but he he's loves being a pilot and has grown up always dreaming of being a pilot, and now he is a pilot. And we're talking about the comparison between the checklist that Kevin has to go through pre-flight, post-flight, in-flight, all the different things that are going on. There's always a checklist, and you got to kind of check them off systematically. Retirement is kind of the same way, right? Before you get into retirement, you have to figure out, hey, do I have enough? How long will it last? Uh, what happens if we have an illness in the family? What happens if somebody passes early? What happens if we both hit the age of 100? How are we going to make sure that our money lasts that long? Uh, what about health care? What about legacy and estate planning? Social Security, when do we start it? Medicare, which which uh, do we choose? Uh, there's so many different parts of retirement, and we're kind of talking about the, the kind of the similarity between being a pilot like Kevin and what he does for his clients at Geiger Investments. If you'd like to learn more, you, you have questions yourself, you can always go to the uh, free website, the non-for-profit website that Kevin and Lauren started. It's retirementfocusacademy.com. There's a bunch of different workshops, all topics related to retirement on there. Uh, there's on-demand, there's in-person classes, there's just all kinds of options. That's retirementfocusacademy.com. Now, we are at the end of August. We're, we're, we're moving along. We're, this year has been interesting, for sure. Not as crazy as last year, but there's still some interesting parts. And Kevin, you've got kids. They're in school. Uh, they're back in school, and I'm sure everything went smooth. Everything Thing was yeah sure whatever you want to do you want to wear a mask go ahead if you don't that's fine probably no controversy in in South Carolina on that <laughs> it's it was quite interesting I, I will tell you they uh, they really tried to push the mask mandate two days before school started and of course they they lost the battle because everyone kind of came at them the day after but it's amazing to finally have the kids back at school you know have our lives back on track in a sense uh, you know they they definitely need to be entertained as much as possible you know with only so many camps we can sign them up for and so having them back at school has been an amazing thing uh, and kind of getting back to you know back to life if you want to call it and kind of moving forward so but yeah so I got yeah. an update I got Isabel now as a senior Yes, yep. and She's Kayla's senior. going to fourth, and fourth grade. Blake's a first grader now. Yeah, wow. yeah, senior. So, so they my, just keep my, on going, don't they? Yeah, and Isabel, she's she's starting to look at colleges now. So she's she's thinking Clemson, a couple of the schools. So now we have to do the tour. So this is this is the fun part. Now Lauren, on the other end, she's she's like, no, 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 no. I'm taking her on the tours. You just stay home and watch the watch kids. the other kids. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is not fair. I want to go see these schools and stuff like that. So, um, so, but it's it's a neat time for her, you know, especially with high school now because she's completed so many credit hours that she pretty much has half half day schools now. So, you know, this semester she's got a half day. Next semester, I think she goes in at like eleven and she's done by like one thirty or something. It's crazy. So unlike my days in high school, where you right. know senior year we were there from the mo- beginning of the morning until the end, there was no such thing as early, you know, l- late start and early release, <laughs> as far as I remember. So, uh, so good for her. You know, she's done really, really well in school, and you know, I can only hope the best for her with wherever she decides to go. Yeah, absolutely, that's cool. So school is underway, and uh, we hope everybody makes it through unscathed, and the teachers do as well as the administrators. It's a, it's a different time. I can tell you that being in school in the '70s, like I was, so it is different. But you think about retirement. Retirement is totally different than my grandparents, you know, back in the 70s when they were retired. It was it's totally different. They had a pension, they had social security. They had they didn't really need any income because if they did, they could just put money into a CD and get 10, 12% and they're winning the game basically all the time. Income was not a problem. Today's retirees, it's more about income. Where is your income going to come from because most of us don't have retirements. So, we're talking about the checklist that you have to do as a pilot before you get on the plane, when you get in the plane, you start to do things, and when you get done, there's a there's a post-flight checklist as well. What types of checks should someone, someone about ready to retire, or maybe they're early in retirement, what size, kind of checklist should they be thinking about? What are the areas of importance? Well, that's a great question, right? Because let's just say you're a few years out from retirement, and you knock on our door and say, hey, Kevin, I'd like to sit down with you. We're like two or three years out. We just want to kind of have a game plan as far as what we should be doing and stuff like that. First thing we usually do is we sit down and we go, okay, let's look at your your current situation. What do you have as far as debt still out there? Do you still have a mortgage, a car payment? Do you still have college expenses from your kids from before? You know, if you're deciding you want to pay for that stuff. 
you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we take a look at all the stuff they've done to save, right? And look at everything they've had for retirement savings. And then we start to basically try to formulate a plan. And what's neat about this is, is we go through this checklist of stuff and ask all these different questions. And then we kind of put a game plan together. And what's neat about it is, is sitting down with these people, especially in the second meeting going, here's a rough draft that we wrote in pencil. Here's how we see your plan working out. Here's how we're going to create that income scenario for yourself because this is the number one concern you should have in retirement. If you're not thinking about you know, how you're going to you know, provide yourself income that's going to be sustainable for the, your whole lifetime and your spouse's lifetime, you're not doing what's right for yourself. Because again, unless you have a pension, which is very rare today, but unless you have a pension, you know, you need to be looking at this as your number one concern. And then obviously healthcare goes into that and so on. But so we sit down, we put a whole plan together and we show them, here's how we're going to create the income plan. Here's how we're going to, you know, create a plan that's going to allow you to continue to grow your retirement savings, you know, because you're going to need that down the road, you know, as cost goes up. Um, and as we set up an income plan, that income plan might not be enough down the road. So we need to make sure that we're putting safety nets in place for down the road and bigger expenses, right? And then from there, then we talk about where they're currently at with their investments, making sure they're not taking too much risk. Because all too often, and I see this all the time, you know, people come in and go, well, no, I'm fine. I'm just in, I'm in an S&P 500 index fund and something else, something else. I go, you realize that's a high risk you know, index, right? It's fine when you're younger and you're trying to accumulate, but if you're a couple years away from retirement, you've got to start toning that back. You've got to stop taking too much risk. We've got too many variables today that this is this is not like six, seven years ago when the market was just bonkers and just continued to go. It didn't matter where, what stock or mutual fund or ETF you bought, they're all doing fantastic. Well, now we have inflation. Now we got COVID. Now we got this you know whole thing going on in Afghanistan. There are all these kind of variables that are out there that is going to have a bigger effect on what's going to happen with your retirement savings. So we sit down, we put a plan together, figure out how to reduce that risk so we make sure that we have the plan that we put in place is going to work when you retire two or three years from now. So it's neat. So I, I enjoy doing that kind of stuff with people that are coming up to retirement. So you think about where are you on your road to retirement? Do you have an income plan, investment strategy, a tax efficient strategy? Do you have a health care plan, a long-term care plan? Do you have legacy and estate all planned out? What about when and how to start Social Security? Do you start at the same time? Do you stagger those as a married couple? How do you do that? What about Medicare? What, is it, what are your decisions going to be when you get to the age of 65? A lot of variables here. The number to chat with Kevin and Lauren and the team at Geiger Investments is 843-375-8700. Again, there's no cost for this. 843-375-8700. And I would imagine that you work with a lot of couples that are, you know, they're couples, right? They're married. So my guess is that every single one of them come in on the same page, right? <laughs> there's never a disagreement. They're always like, sure, my husband handles all the monies and I'm good with him taking all the risk that he wants. Uh, that's about one out of a hundred, <laughs> right? <laughs> but 99 <laughs> out of a hundred, you know, it typically, I would say this is typically how it works. There's always the one spouse, uh, that comes in, you know, or, you know, the one, or, or, let me take that back. The one spouse that actually calls us and says, okay, I want to set up a meeting, heard you on the radio or saw you on TV, you know, and I'm concerned, you know, can we set up a meeting? Sure. And so they set up the meeting and, and there they are, the husband and wife come, you know, walking in. And, and a lot of times, you know, we get a lot of phone calls from the wives. Um, they, you know, and, and they love meeting with Lauren, especially. So a lot of times we'll do a joint meeting where it's me and Lauren meeting because we feel like it's important to bring both perspectives because this is the one thing that you get a little differently in our office. When we both get to meet with you, you know, she's looking to make sure that she's making sure that the wife is being heard, making sure her needs are there, making sure we're addressing all that stuff. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there kind of like an overall person looking at what where he's at, figuring out what his concerns are and things like that. But a lot of times we sit down, you know, the wife had called us and said, hey, I'm concerned about this stuff. And they come in. And I, I would tell you almost every time, and it's, 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 it's almost like clockwork. They sit down, the wife's in, you know, in the meeting, right? He's sitting there with his arms crossed, sitting back in his chair. <laughs> you could tell he doesn't even want to be there because he's got it all figured out, you know, and that's, that's, and they've been, he's like, I've been making so much money in the last 10 years in my 401k. Why do I need someone like this? So what's neat is, is, you know, we sit down and I start asking you know, tons of questions. I start addressing things that they're, not, I know for fact, a lot of them, they're not even thinking about, both of them. And all of a sudden you'll start seeing him creep his chair and you'll see him move his chair forward. His arms go onto the table and you're finally realizing I'm finally getting his attention, right? 
And so what's neat about this is now all of a sudden, you know, I look at him and go, I get it. You, you thought you wanted to do this on your own and you probably could, but why would you want to risk destroying your retirement going forward? You know, all these little plans you had, whether you're going to play golf five days a week or whatever the case would be, why destroy it when you can work with a professional that's going to make sure everything is covered, right? The T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. We're ensuring that we're building an income plan. We're ensuring that we're not taking too much risk with the portfolio. We're ensuring we're having your health care situation figured out. And then we're building a legacy plan if you want to pass assets on to your kids and we'll show you a way to be strategic about doing that without affecting your retirement savings so you can enjoy your retirement because that's our job. Let us do what we need to do so you can enjoy your life. It's well worth the cost of working with someone like ourselves to make sure that there's no mistakes made that you could easily make on your own. So I love when we sit down with those people because it's so neat just to watch the, the other spouses sit there in the chair. I mean, there's nothing better watching right, the arms right. crossed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now they're engaged. Yeah. So yeah, yeah and it's yeah, great to get them never engaged. Thought about that. Yeah. So once you meet with your clients and, and prospective clients and like couples like that, for example, um, I think, you know, a lot of People have, have sat down with the insurance agents. Hey, I need home insurance. I need life insurance. I need car insurance. Whatever it is that they're you know as you're as you're working through your working years and may have a stockbroker that helps them grow their money. It's all about growing our money. That, and certainly those are important. But my guess is most have never sat down with a company like Geiger Investments, a retirement planning group, here to help put things together. But then to be with them for the next thirty or forty years, how does that all play out? Well, that, that's just it. You know, we are really geared towards retirement people, right? People going into retirement, and we focus on in being a part of their life. I would say it's you become a part of the Geiger Investment family. We want to become a part of your family because we want to make sure that we're doing everything that needs to be done. We're about reducing risk and making sure that we're covering all, everything that needs to be there for your retirement. You know, working with a stockbroker, he's not going to be the person that's going to be looking at your health insurance, looking at making you tax efficient in retirement and doing all these things. That's what we do. We cover those areas because it's important that you're doing the right things for yourself in retirement. We're not in the growing stages anymore. We're in the preservation stage, right? And, and creating an income stage and all these other things. You need to make sure you're working with an individual that's going to be doing the right things so you don't run out of money in retirement. So again, that number, if you'd like to get this whole process started, there's no cost and, and there's no obligation either. You come in and sit down with the team. You, you, it's not like you're a client of Geiger Investments. There, This is a two-way street. You're the CEO. It's your retirement. It's your hopes and dreams. Kevin and the team at Geiger Investments are your CFO. Look at it that way. They're the chief financial officer. Here's things maybe you didn't think about that really you should think about. Here's kind of how we put this together and that's the idea. You come in and you find out, and you're going to, you know, what you don't know, you don't know. So it's a great opportunity to sit down with the team at Geiger Investments. It's 843-375-8700. There, again, there's no cost. There's no obligation. There's no pressure. There's no judgment either. Kevin and Lauren and the team are here to help you live the retirement that you've always hoped you can. They don't know. They don't know if you can. They don't know what your hopes and dreams are yet. That's the idea. You call. Let's talk. 843-375-8700. Again, is the number 843-375-8700. And I would always encourage you to check out the retirementfocusacademy.com website. A great resource for anyone nearing retirement or in retirement. And there's never a cost to you to go to the Retirement Focus Academy, whether it's on demand, whether it's uh, in-person workshops, a lot of opportunities for you, retirementfocusacademy.com. Kevin, enjoyed our show today. Enjoyed the chat. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Have a great week. We'll do it again next week. Sounds good, Mark, and take care, y'all. Advisory services offered through Black Ridge Asset Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Securities are offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC, member of FINRA and SIPC. Black Ridge Asset Management, LLC, and Geiger Investments are separate and independent entities from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual's situation. Black Ridge Asset Management LLC is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Black Ridge Asset Management LLC. This radio show is a paid placement.